But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. On seven occasions, Pilate went before the crowd uh, and brought Jesus forth and said, What do you want me to do with him? Behold the man. Behold your king. Behold majesty. What do you want me to do with this man? What do you want me to do with this man who is your king, who is majesty on high? They say, crucify him. Crucify him. Who is this one? Who is this person that said it not? Who is this one that Pilate says, behold, gaze upon, pay attention to, look at the state of the man, behold him. He is more marred than any man. Who is this one? Who is this prisoner who has been subjected to all the shame, all the ignominy, all the scourging, all the beating, all the mocking? Who is he? Who is this one that suffered the agony in the garden? Please turn to that. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. The Gospel of Luke 22. Our Savior suffered. Our Savior went through a terrible beating, suffering, scourging, whipping of men. And here in verse 44, it says this. And being in an agony, this is Luke 22, verse 44. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Who is this one? Who is this one in agony in the garden? His sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood. Suffering. Incredible pressure was upon him. He was going to be made sin. He was going to become sin. He was going to go to the cross and pay the debt of our sin in his own body on the tree. And as he was there in the garden of Gethsemane, he was in agony, so much so that he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. Let's go back to first mention. Genesis chapter 3. I love checking out first mention. You may have realized that by now. But Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19. I'll read verse 18 to give you the context. Genesis 3 verse 18 and 19. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thy return onto the ground. Sweat is a product of the curse. Sweat came as a result of man's sin. Sweat was brought about by the fall. After the fall, God says, by the sweat of thy brow. Man was in the garden. And because of sin, he was cursed. And he had to work. And he had to sweat. Adam sinned. God pronounced it. The second place we read of sweat, did you know that the word sweat is only mentioned three times in the Scripture? Three times. 
Please turn to Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel chapter 44. And we'll read from verse 15. Ezekiel 44 verse 15 says, But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that keep the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. They shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins, and shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. The first mention is in the garden. Sweat is a result of the fall. The second mention is in Ezekiel that we've just read. Here we have men of God. Here we have those that minister in the presence of God, in the things of God, given a charge from God to be clothed in linen. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. Sweat was a result of sin. The priests that ministered to the things of God were not to come in contact with sweat, which speaks of sin. Now let's go back to the Gospel of Luke 22. Read that verse again. Verse 44, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. The first Adam sweat under the curse of sin. The second Adam sweat before putting away sin. The priest was to have no contact with sweat, a type of sin. Sweat was not to come in contact with the inner robe, the robe of righteousness. Read Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 and onwards. Fine linen, fine, clean, and white, uh, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. When Christ sweat, as it were, great drops of blood, he, as our great high priest, was identifying himself with the curse as he would become sin for us. And as the sweat was, as it were, covered by the blood, we see the sacrificial lamb taking place, as it were, in the garden and the blood covering the type of sin, sweat. Three times it's mentioned in the Scripture. The sacrificial lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ, who was the answer to Isaac's question in Genesis 22. Where is the Lamb? Here is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is something he had to do. This is not something he could have shirked away from. He had to do it so that you and I could be saved. Please turn to John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, we have the use of the word must four times. And it comes across in the imperative sense. John chapter 3. In verse 7, 
the Lord said unto Nicodemus. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful story, the story of Nicodemus. You know, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. A little girl was in a Sunday school classroom, and the teacher said to her, Why do you think Nicodemus came to Jesus by night? And she says, He couldn't wait till the morning. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Innocency. <laughs> In verse 7 it says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. That's the first must. This is a sinner's must. Every sinner must be born again. Go down to verse 32. It says, He must increase. This is the sovereign's must. He must increase. The end of that verse says, but I must decrease. This is the servant's must. We have the sinner's must. We have the servant's must. We have the sovereign's must. But then when you go back to verse 14, we have the Savior's must. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He could not shirk away from it. He could not back away from it. He certainly would not. He had no intentions of doing that. He must be lifted up. He must go on that cross. He must pay the penalty of our sin. Who is this? This is God. Who is this? This is God Almighty, deity in the flesh, suffering, suffering for you. I know he suffered for me. I want us to remember the excellency of his person. I want us to remember the, the glory of his majesty. This is God's eternal son in the hands of cruel men. This is the one whom the Father said, let all the angels of God worship him. Given over to a rough group of Roman soldiers to do as they will to a point. This is the Lord who we will meditate upon this day. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been telling myself for many years now, I'm going to do a study one day on the names of Christ. Uh, sometimes I wonder, and maybe some of you eminent scholars could tell me, and I'm not being frivolous in saying that, sometimes we see in the scriptures Jesus called Jesus. Sometimes he's called Lord. Sometimes he's called Lord Jesus. Sometimes it's called Christ. Sometimes it's called the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's called Christ Jesus. Sometimes it's Christ Jesus, the Lord. I'm going to do a study on that one day. It'll be interesting just to check it out. But this is the one who is prophet, priest, and king. This is the one who died for us. I want you to turn just for a few moments and we'll look at Matthew chapter 17. What time did you say? Three o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew 17, because we haven't started yet. This is introduction. <laughs> okay, Matthew 17. I've been learning. I'm not going to point the finger at anybody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Liberty. It's called liberty. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 17 and verse 1 says this, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Remember that. Please turn to Mark chapter 9. 
Mark chapter 9 and verses 2 